The first days of February were really tough on Idlib rebels and foreign powers that had made a bet on their successes. Forces of the deceitful Assad regime, supported by Russia and Iran, were rolling over the region, and even the best representatives of the civilized world seemed to be unable to stop them. In the period between February 1st and February 7th, units of the Syrian army, led by the Tiger forces, took control of approximately 30 villages and towns to the east and southeast of the M4-M5 crossroads. Sheikh Idris, Saramin, and Sarakib, the key strong points of Harat Tir el Sham, the Turkestan Islamic Party, and Haras al Din, fell into the hands of pro government forces. Sarakib, the largest urban center in southwestern Idlib, was a key logistical hub used by Idlib groups to resupply their forces deployed in northern Latakia, southern Idlib, and southwestern Aleppo. Simultaneously, government groups carried out another diversionary strike in southwestern Aleppo, capturing several settlements. The attack was spearheaded by the 4th Armored Division and Iranian-backed militias. Nonetheless, al Is remained the impregnable camp in the area. The key role played here was the lack of air support on this part of the front line. According to sources loyal to Idlib groups, Syrian and Russian warplanes were busy bombing schools, hospitals, birthday cake bakeries, carnival processions, and other key humanitarian targets near Sarakib. Harat Tirel Sham and other Idlib groups conducted several counterattacks near Sarakib, Rashidin 4, and Khan Turman. Up to 10 suicide bombers were employed against pro Assad forces. This appeared to be not enough to stop the advancing pro Assad forces. However, on this front line, Harat Tirel Sham forces achieved one of their rare successes. One of their attacks killed four Russian military personnel embedded with Syrian troops. The Syrian advance came not without bitter misunderstanding. In the course of the operation, the Syrians rescued several observation posts of the Turkish army which had been surrounded by Al-Qaeda-linked militants. So Turkish forces can freely observe the Idlib ceasefire and avoid the constant terrorist threat behind their back. Regretfully, eight Turkish service members accidentally came too close to Al-Qaeda positions and died in Syrian army strikes. In response, the Turkish military announced that it had struck over 50 Syrian targets, killing and injuring dozens of Syrian fighters. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and other top Turkish leaders even threatened Syria with a full-scale military action if it does not withdraw its forces from Turkish observation posts in Idlib by the end of February. On the evening of February 6th, reports appeared that Turkish artillery was even used to support a Hayrat Tahrir al-Sham attack on the Syrian army near Sarakib. Apparently, the Turkish leadership is misinformed about the situation in Idlib. If it was not, the wise move would be to recheck the Astana Agreement text and find out that Harat Tahrir al-Sham and other Al-Qaeda-linked groups have never been protected by the ceasefire regime. So it is a bit dangerous to put Turkish troops near their positions. Since the start of the operations in southeastern Idlib on December 19th, pro-government forces have taken control of over 1,200 square kilometers and deployed in close proximity to Idlib city, the center of the moderate rebels' hope to build their own little caliphate. Nonetheless, in the current conditions, Idlib is likely to be relatively safe if its defenders do not run away too fast. No large urban centers, logistical hubs, or other vital targets are located in the Zawaiya and Arbaeen mountain areas. Idlib groups also seem to not have enough manpower, equipment, or resources to use them as a foothold for a large-scale strike into the Syrian army's rear. So, in the coming weeks, government forces will likely focus on offensive operations along the M5 highway in order to create and secure a strong link between Hama and Aleppo cities. The highway will also allow the Syrians to redeploy their reserves with increased speed. Another factor is the increasing Turkish military presence in the region. The Erdogan government is creating more and more observation posts that will have to be rescued from Al-Qaeda.